Hello and welcome back to the Math 055 Notes. Uh, this is a section 6.2 over rational expressions and we're going to be adding and subtracting uh, the rational expressions. So, um, and basically remember that rational expressions and functions, okay, rational, these are just fractions, okay? So these are fractional so it says rational, I like to say fractional expressions, okay? And so that's what we're dealing with. Um, so what I wanna talk about here, it says, you know, we have this question. What are some major differences between the process of multiplying slash dividing fractions and adding and subtracting fractions? So multiplying and dividing, so let's write here, multiplying slash dividing, okay? We don't have to have common denominators, so no common denominators needed, all right, which is kind of nice, okay? But when we add and subtract, okay, we must have common denominators, so must have common denominators, all right? And so we're going to work on that with... Um, with, with just some, having some numbers here. Um, and I'm going to do a couple of examples of, um, of this. So let's look at this first example of 1 eighth plus 5 eighths. So if I take 1 eighth and add 5 eighths to that, what I can do, because I have a common denominator of 8, I'm just going to add my numerators. All right, and I'm going to write this as 1 plus 5 all over 8. Okay, and that's going to end up giving me 6 over 8, and each of these numbers are divisible by 2. So it's going to give us 3 fourths, okay, and that's my answer, all right? <coughs> now let's look at another example where we don't have common denominators. So let me look at something like this. Let's say we have something like um, uh, 1 fourth instead of 1 eighth plus... 5 eighths, okay? What I want to do is get a common denominator of 8. So I, what I want to do is kind of sit here and go, okay, uh, if I multiply this side by 2 over 2, uh, then this is going to give me the same thing as um, 2 eighths plus 5 eighths, okay? And because I have a common denominator, then I can add my numerators and I'm going to get 2 plus 5 all over 8, which is going to give me 7 eighths. Okay, now I can't simplify that anymore because 7 and 8 um, don't have any common factors except for 1. All right, let's look at, at, at the, another one real quick. And let's just say that I have um, 1 half plus 1 third. Okay, now between 2 and 3, my common denominator would be 6. So I'd want to multiply this one by 3 over 3 and this one by 2 over 2. All right, and this is a 3. It doesn't, shouldn't be a, doesn't look like a 5. All right, and so then what happens is, is this. All right, that's going to give me 3 sixths plus 2 sixths. Okay, and if I combine those together, all right, uh, I have six, a common denominator of 6. So I'm just going to add my numerators together. All right, so 3 plus 2 over 6, and that's going to give me an answer of 5, 6, okay? So sometimes, you know, when you're adding and subtracting fractions, um, you have a common denominator, okay? And, and you can just go ahead and add your numerators. Sometimes you have, uh, you know, one denominator that you have to turn into the other, all right? And then once you have a common denominator, you can add your numerators. Um, and then here, um, you know, if you have completely non-common denominators, uh, usually the trick is to multiply the other fraction by the opposite denominator, okay? And that will give you a common denominator, and then go from there, okay? So now what I want to do here um, is, is kind of do the exact same thing, but we're going to go an extra step, and we're going to look at this in terms of having algebraic expressions as our denominator, okay, instead of just numbers, all right? So what I want to do <clears throat> is look at this first one. Uh, I do need to state any restrictions. Uh, because my denominator, so let's do that first. 
Uh, remember, rest restrictions are, are values that make your denominator zero. So restrictions on this, uh, I'm going to set a minus 2 equal to zero. All right, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. All right, so a is equal to 2. All right, that's my restriction. So um, my restrictions is that um, the value for a, a cannot equal 2. Okay, this makes... So this makes my expression undefined, makes it undefined. All right, so, all right, let's go here and let's take a look at this. Now, all I want to do here is, um, is subtract these fractions. So adding and subtracting, you have to have common denominator. So we have a common denominator. We are good on that. So what I want to do is rewrite this as one fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this as a minus 2 in my denominator, but I'm going to subtract my numerators, 4a minus 8, okay? And so what I can do is just do 4a minus 8. Now, I can't combine these by any means, all right? But the cool thing that I can do is I can look at this, and I can kind of look at what we did on the last one and say, well, wait a minute, can I simplify this? So if we can factor anything out of my numerators, which we can factor out of 4, all right, so if I factor out a 4, it's going to leave me with a minus 2 over a minus 2, okay? And these are going to divide out to 1. And so all we're left with on this is just an answer of 4, okay? And so if we s subtract these fractions, we actually get an answer of 4. Kind of nice, kind of cool. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Now, on this one, what I want to do, um, I have a common denominator of x plus 2, all right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this all as one fraction over x plus 2. So I've got 6x plus 8 minus. Now, when I subtract this fraction, I need to subtract the quantity 3x plus 2, all right? And so what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to uh, distribute my negative. So I'm going to rewrite this as 6x plus 8 minus 3x and then minus 2. And this is all over x plus 2. So now let's combine like terms. So I've got 6x minus 3x is going to give me a value of 3x. And then I've got 8 minus 2, which gives me a value of positive 6. So 3x plus 6. And then... and then I've got x plus 2 in my denominator. Now, what I also want to do here is I want to see, can I factor anything out of my numerator? And I can factor out a 3. And that's going to leave me with x plus 2 over x plus 2. All right, and those are going to divide out. And my answer that we're going to be left with is simply 3. Okay, let's look at the next example um up here now what i notice over here is that i don't have common denominators okay so these are not common denominators this is x minus y and this is y minus x now on this in order to make them common denominators because they look very similar what i could do is i could factor out a negative one from either one of them i'm just going to choose the right one so i'm going to factor out a negative one all right, so when I do that, on the left side, I've got 3xy over x minus y, plus um, I've got 3y squared. Now, if I factor out a negative 1 out of this, um, out of my denominator, it's going to give me negative y and then plus x. Okay, now what I can do um, is I can switch these around, all right, so that my, um, so that my denominators look the same. So then I've got this. I've got 3xy over x minus y. Um, and then let's do this. Um, let's just make this a minus. Because what's happening here is that this negative 1, you know, I can put this in the numerator or the denominator, it doesn't matter. But if I kind of just think put it in the numerator, it's going to make this numerator negative. So I can just subtract this fraction. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So, um, so I'm just going to do that. So I've just got minus 3y squared over then x minus y. And now we have a common denominator, okay, of x minus y. So now what I've got is I'm just going to write all of this over a common denominator. 
So I'm going to do 3xy minus 3y squared all over a common denominator of x minus y. All right. Now up here, what I can factor out is a 3y. All right. So I want to look to see, can I factor anything out? And so I can factor out a 3y. And when I do that, I'm left with just x minus y up top, and then I've got that same thing down below, x minus y. Now the cool thing is, is that these are going to divide out, and my answer that we get is just going to give me 3y, okay? And so that's my answer, all right? So, um, all right, so now what I want to do, okay, so now let's take a look back over here, and what I want to do is, um, you know, we've already kind of done a couple of examples up here as to how to add and subtract um, some fractions uh, with non-common denominators. Um, and this one's going to be like this. Now, what I want to talk about here um, is something called the least common multiple, all right? And uh, what I would do to add this fraction. So what I think about, if I think of the multiples, all right, let's do this. Let's do the multiples. of 4 and 6, okay? And so the least common, the multiples that we've got is this is going to be 4, 8, 12, uh, 16, and 20, okay? Now for 6, I've got 6, 12, 18, 24. Now what I notice is that the least common multiple that I have is 12, okay? And therefore, that's my common denominator, Okay, And so for that, because it's my common denominator, I want to turn 4 into a 12 and 6 into a 12. So I'm going to multiply this one by, um, by 3 over 3 here. I'm going to multiply this one by 2 over 2. So when I do that, um, that's going to give me, um, what is that going to be? 3 twelfths plus 10 twelfths. All right. That's a 12 down there. Uh, and so what that's going to give me, because I have a common denominator of 12, I'm just going to add 3 and 10 together, and that's going to give me 13 twelfths, okay? And that's how I would do that. So what I want to do is, is kind of look more about this least common multiple, um, because that's what's going to give me my, uh, my, 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 my common denominators. And you know what, guys, let's just go ahead and skip this, um, and let's move on to the next page. So let's skip this part. Okay, so let's just kind of jump in here to um, how we do these. I feel like uh, the vocabulary with the least common multiple on the last page uh, can be a little tricky when you're dealing with, um, you know, these kinds of uh, rational expressions. So what I'm going to do here, uh, what we have is we have three uh, examples of us adding and subtracting um, these types of, of uh, problems, these rational expressions. Okay, And what I'm going to do is talk about the common denominator. Um, and so let's write that up here. So rational expressions, I want you to write rational expressions um, common denominator common denominator alright and what I want to do is uh, one of the best things to do is for me is to factor factor both the numerator slash denominator before I do anything, okay? Factor the numerator and denominator first, okay? Then we look for our common denominator, all 
All right. And then once we find our common denominator, we have to multiply by, um, by what you need in order to get a common denominator. So in order to get a common denominator. So let's kind of look at that. So what I want to do here um, is look at this first example. Now what I notice is that I can't really factor on um, any of these denominators, but what I have to do, so because that's already done, what I want to look at now is what is my common denominator, all right? And it's a little bit tricky to kind of figure this out, uh, you know, right off the bat. But what I want to look at is my largest number and my largest exponent, okay? And so my largest number here is going to be 6. My largest exponent here is going to be something x squared, okay? So I can turn all of these into my common denominator of 6x squared, okay? So my common denominator is going to be, wow, this thing is like getting hard to write on for some reason. So 6x squared is my common denominator. So what I want to do is think about, all right, what do I have to multiply? What do I have to do to turn my denominators into 6x squared, okay? And you kind of have to think about, all right, well, what would be, you know, common out of all of them, okay? Um, so 6 is my largest number, x squared is my largest exponent, all right? So what I can do here is I can, and let me rewrite this whole thing so i got some room. So I'm going to do 3 over x minus uh, 5 over 3x squared, and then plus 7 over 6x. So when I do this, what I want to do uh, on this first part is think about what do I have to multiply x by to get a common denominator of 6x squared. So what I would multiply the top and bottom by would be a 6x, okay? And that will give me 6x squared in my denominator, all right? Um, when I have minus three, 5 over 3x squared to get 3x squared into 6x squared, I need to multiply that by... Um, just a 2 over 2, all right, because that will give me 6x squared. And then on the last one, I just need to multiply that one by x over x, and that's going to give me a common denominator of 6x squared. All right, so when we multiply all this through, okay, and remember when we multiply fractions, we just multiply across. So I'm going to do um, 6x times 3, which is going to give me 18x over 6x squared, multiply negative 5 times 2, so we just multiply these across, okay, and it's going to give me minus 10 over 6x squared, and then plus uh, 7 times x is just going to give me 7x over 6x squared, all right? So now I have a common denominator, all right? And now that I have a common denominator, what I want to do is just add my numerator. So I've got 18x minus 10 plus 7x, all those added together, all divided by 6x squared, okay? So now what I want to do is just combine my like terms in my numerator. So that's going to give me, uh, what is that? 18x plus 7x is going to give me 25x, so 25x minus 10, all over 6x squared. Now, what I want to do is see, can I simplify this any further? Can I do anything else to simplify this? So what I can take out of there, out of my numerator, is going to be a 5. So I can factor out a 5, and that's going to leave me with 5x minus 2 and then over 6x squared. Now, nothing is going to divide out here. Uh, so you can leave your answer like this, or you could leave your answer like this. doesn't matter. But, um, you know, you always want to go through and factor to see if you can get anything else out of that. All right, let's take a look over here um, in Part B. What I want to do is I want to 
um, factor everything. So let me rewrite this. Let me factor out what I can. Um, up here, I've got a, I can factor out a 2. So if I factor out a 2 out of my numerator, that's going to give me uh, 8 minus an x. Okay. My denominator here, uh, because this is the difference of squares, x squared minus 16, I can factor that into x plus 4 times x minus 4, okay? I can't factor anything out of this fraction over here, but I want you to notice that I have an x plus 4, okay, over in that one. So now what I want to look for here is my common denominator, okay? What I have over here, and this is kind of how I do it. This is why I factor everything out. Um, I have a common x plus 4, okay? So what do I need to do to turn this fraction, okay, this denominator, into this denominator? So they both have a common x plus 4, but this one has an x minus 4, and this one doesn't. So what I want to do is get a common denominator, okay, I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom by x minus 4 to get my common denominator, all right? And so let's just look at what our next step is, okay? Um, and so I've got 2 times 8 minus x over x plus 4 times x minus 4 plus... 3 times x minus 4 times x plus 4 times x minus 4, all right? Now we have a common denominator, all right? And that's good. So we're going to keep our common denominator, all right? So let's just write this all over one fraction. So I'm going to do 2 times 8 minus x plus 3 times x minus 4 all over a common denominator, of x plus 4 times x minus 4, all right? And so um, let's take a look here. Let's uh, simplify our numerator. Let's distribute this 2, so it's going to give us 16 minus 2x. Uh, distribute the 3, so that's going to give me plus 3x uh, and then minus 12. So if we get this together, um, combine our like terms. Let me put this all over x plus 4 times x minus 4. <coughs> okay, combine my like terms. So negative 2x plus 3x is just going to give me a positive x. All right. And then I've got 16 minus 12, which is going to give me a positive 4. So 6x plus 4. And then we're going to divide this by uh, x plus 4 times x minus 4. All right. Now, the cool thing here is that my x plus 4s are going to divide out, and what we're going to be left with is just a single 1 over x minus 4, okay? And that's it, all right, and that's all we're doing. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the last one. last one's going to involve a little bit more stuff. Now, what I want to do is um, I want to factor my numerator and my denominator. All right, so if I want to factor, let me write out my fraction over here, 2x over x plus 3. I can't factor anything out of that, so I'm just going to write it as 2x over x plus 3. I'm going to subtract this, um, and let's factor my numerator here. So two numbers that multiply to negative 15 but add to negative 4. And I can't readily think of anything that does. So what I want to do is just leave that as it is. So x squared minus 4x minus 15 all over this denominator here. So x squared plus 5x plus 6. So two numbers that multiply to 6 but add to 5 is going to be 3 and 2. So I'm going to, multiply, I'm going to have x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, the reason that I do this, again, is because this helps me find my common denominator. So both of these contain an x plus 3. Now, this one on the right side has an x plus 2, but this one on the left does not. So what I want to do is include that in there. So I'm going to multiply uh, x plus 2 on both the top and the bottom. All right. So 
what I've got is this, all right? Um, so let me rewrite this as I'm going to do 2x times x plus 2 over x plus 2 times x plus 3 minus x squared minus 4x minus 15 all over x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, the cool thing is, is that I'm going to distribute this 2x here, all right? And so I'm going to get, uh, this is going to give me 2x squared plus 4x over x plus 2 times x plus 3, and then we're going to subtract uh, this entire quantity, x squared minus 4x minus 15, all over my common denominator, which is x plus 2 times x plus 3. All right, so now... Uh, let's write this all over one denominator, x plus 2 over x plus 3, now that we've got a common denominator. And so I'm going to do this as 2x squared plus 4x minus the quantity x squared minus 4x minus 15. Okay, And that's where a lot of us are going to get screwed up when we do this. So I have to distribute this negative, all right? So what we'll get as a result is 2x squared plus 4x minus an x squared plus 4x and then plus 15, okay? And so, uh, and we're going to put all of this over a common denominator, which is x plus 2 times x plus 3, all right? So now what I want to do up here is combine my like terms. So I've got 2x minus, 2x squared minus x squared and then I've got a 4x plus 4x. So 2x minus x squared is just going to give me a single x squared. 4x plus 4x is going to be plus 8x and then plus 15. And then that's going to be all over x plus 2 times x plus 3. All right, now, what I want to do is I want to factor my numerator here. So let me write this up here. So if I factor my numerator, this is going to factor to x plus 3 times x plus 5, and then that's going to be all over x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, the cool thing is, is that my x plus 3s divide out, and our answer is going to be x plus 5 divided by x plus 2, okay? So, the you know... What I'm doing here, I know this might be very, very confusing, and it's a lot of work. You know, the issue is, is that all I'm doing is adding and subtracting fractions, and I'm doing it by using this concept of having a common denominator. So if you just kind of think back on how to do this with, um, you know, numbers, you know, adding in that extra algebraic expression isn't too terrible, okay? So... Um, that's it for the video, and, um, you know, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.